And uh, so this uh, uh, second uh, speakers come from and uh, Taiwan, and is uh, and Doctor Min Fang Yin, and and uh, she will talk about the Taiwanese population based organized cancer screening, and uh, I, I hope you can limit your presentation about 15, 18 minutes. I, I really like have some discussions. You know, save some two or three minutes. We can have a very active discussion. Okay, okay please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to uh, introduce the Taiwanese population-based organized cancer screening. And uh, first of all, I would like to show you the, the trend of the instance uh, during the last uh, 15 years. Uh, you can see uh, it's, uh, the breast cancer has increased dramatically, and uh, uh, so, so is the colorectal cancer. But uh, uh, these two cancers, we have the uh, we have the nationwide screening since 2004. And uh, for the one with a very, uh, very obvious uh, decreasing trend is uh, cervical cancer, uh, for which one uh, we have the uh, screening, pap smear screening since uh, 1995. And this figure shows only the invasive cancer. So um, the uh, cervical cancer, the instance for the invasive cervical cancer has been uh, taken, play, uh, taken in effect since uh, the introduction of pap smear screening. And uh, uh, a, in addition to breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and the cervical cancer screening, we also have the screening program for oral cancer. Uh, we all know that uh, bitter quiz alcohol and uh, uh, tobacco smoking uh, ha have been identified as uh, important carcinogenesis for uh, oral cancer uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, esophageal cancers. Uh, in Taiwan, we have the prevalence of bitter quit chewing about 10%. Therefore, uh, for, the, uh, for male, the oral cancer uh, instance ranked about the fourth, uh, the top fourth uh, in males. Therefore, uh, so, uh, we, in our nationwide screening program, we also consider oral cancer. And uh, uh, in our countries, people are chewing a bit of quiz, and it's, uh, we say it's a heavy dose because people chewing the quiz, uh, the whole, the whole uh, piece rather than uh, cut it in small pieces. So the dose is actually quite high, and uh, uh, fortunately, uh, we don't use the uh, tobacco uh, added in the, in the bitter quiz. But uh, this uh, already caused the, uh, the high instance of uh, oral cancer in Taiwan. Uh, based on the, uh, the community-based integrated screening introduced by Professor, Tom, uh, Professor Chen this morning, uh, since 1999 uh, in Kilong, we have started several uh, screening programs for several cancers. Also, the nationwide screening program has not, uh, have not been launched. Uh, in, in this uh, platform, we, uh, we, we screen for five kinds of cancer, I include the four, the four I just mentioned, the breast cancer, colorectal cancer, cervical cancer, and the oral cancer. In addition, uh, we have uh, uh, liver cancer screening as well, and uh, uh, combined with the three chronic disease. So uh, in the community side, people, uh, will, this is a... Uh, uh, outreach screening. So uh, we, we don't ask people to go to a hospital, but uh, they, will, uh, they will go to the, the, um, the moving site for screening. It's, uh, the, uh, the screening sites will be changed uh, time by time, uh, depends on uh, we, uh, which, uh, which location we want to uh, focus for the, uh, for the residents. And uh, uh, in our screening, uh, in uh, here is the summary for our nationwide screening. We have a cervical, cervical cancer screening with a triennial pap smear since 1995. We have breast cancer with a biannual mammography screening since 2004. We also have corrected colorectal cancer screening with a biannual fit for subjects aged 50 to 69. And finally, the oral cancer just targeted at the high-risk group who are a smoker or bitter quiz chewer since 2000, uh, 2004. So uh, in the following, I will, uh, I will introduce the, uh, the, cancer, the screening program for colorectal cancer, uh, breast cancer, and the oral cancer. 
uh, in our um, in our national wide approach, a uh, from the from the first first phase uh, between 2004 and 2009, we say it's, uh, uh, this is the uh, first period for our screening. And uh, uh, in this period, the majority of the screening modality is uh, the outreaching, uh, outreaching approach I just mentioned. Uh, in, in this period, uh, six years, uh, we have uh, screening about one million uh, subjects for colorectal cancer, and uh, uh, this is the community-based screening, uh, majorly derived from the uh, Kilong experience. But uh, after 2009, the government want to uh, enhance the, uh, the coverage rate because the one million only uh, covered about 20% of the subjects aged uh, 50 to 69. Therefore, uh, we, uh, in addition to our reaching pro uh, approach, we also uh, open to the hospital or clinics to uh, distribute the feed, uh, the feed kits and then uh, subjects can choose go to the community or go to the hospital and uh, uh, in the in in the last this is uh, this figure is for for three years, in three years, we are screening for about two million people uh, at the same age and uh, uh, um, for the coronal cancer uh, we uh, we have our target population. Therefore, uh, in the, uh, right now, uh, in addition to outreaching, uh, we have uh, people go to a hospital or clinics to take the screening. For those with positive results, they will refer for colonoscopy. And uh, for, uh, either positive or negative, the positive uh, patient will be treated and uh, follow the surveillance. But for the negative, uh, a subject with a finding of uh, adenoma, uh, uh, then they they will uh, they will follow the uh, sever uh, severance. Uh, for those with negative finding, then they will be invited uh, the next two years. And uh, uh, for uh, for this program, uh, we have a uh, support from Health Promotion Administration, and and uh, which uh, allowed us to uh, to to link our screening data sets uh, to the central database. And now we have the uh, we have the screen registry, we have cancer registry, we have population regi registry, and uh, uh, death registry, which can uh, can be uh, can be merged together to check. Uh, to check all the cancers and the interval cancers and the deaths, and also uh, our uh, we we have a regular monitor uh, for the oops, sorry. Uh, all, all of this has been uh, supported by the integrated uh, information system, and uh, I just mentioned we have this different uh, cancer registry, uh, death registry, and uh, also, uh, most importantly, uh, we collect our uh, screening registry data via a website system. Uh, so. People in any uh, in any site can uh, can register uh, their, uh, their, uh, can register all the subjects visit their uh, their, their institute, and also uh, we uh, with this system uh, we help our uh, colleagues to uh, to do the referral and uh, to check um, about uh, to check everything like the positive rates, the referral rates, and uh, the screening findings. And in these two years, we also uh, unified the uh, colonoscopy report system in order to improve the quality of colonoscopy. Here, is, uh, here are some figures for the, uh, for the screening indicator. Uh, you can see, I just mentioned, we, uh, we have the rollout uh, after 2010. Therefore, uh, our, our screening volume has increased since uh, 2010. And uh, uh, because in after 2010, hospitals, uh, in, uh, hospitals joined this program. Uh, our positive rate is actually about twice uh, compared with the uh, first period, but the referral rate uh, has decreased, and uh, 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 the, positive, uh, the positive rate doesn't change quite a lot, and the uh, detection rate has, uh, has been increased uh, after 2010. And uh, this is the uh, corresponding figures I want to show you. Uh, with the uh, increasing volume of screening, uh, we, we have the uh, high positive rate, higher pos and uh, more, uh, more, more subjects with a positive finding, and uh, uh, our, our waiting time has been increased. Uh, 
for our colorectal cancer screening, uh, we we found uh, low uh, detected uh, screen detected cases has the lowest proportion of uh, stage four uh, colorectal cancer compared with those uh, refused to attend the screening. And uh, for uh, stage zero and stage one, uh, it's uh, almost eighty nine percent. But uh, sorry, here it's almost fifty uh, percent. But uh, um, for a refuser, it's only twenty percent. Uh, uh, stage zero or uh, in, in situ or stage one colorectal cancer. Re as far uh, as far as uh, survival is concerned, uh, the screen detected got uh, the very best uh, very best survival compared with the uh, clinical clinically detected. Uh, this is a majorly uh, low refusal to attend the screening. And uh, uh, for this one, uh, we have to think about uh, how to improve our uh, participants. And uh, uh, they might have a perceived barrier or low public awareness. Uh, for the interval cancer, then uh, the quality issue is very important. And uh, uh, for, oops, sorry, oops. For uh, screen detected, um, maybe the quality issue can uh, uh, can enhance our uh, our survival for screening detected uh, further. Here's a result about the uh, mortality. Uh, if we compare the screening and non-screening, we found the screening uh, people uh, attending the screening has a 60% lower mortality. But uh, uh, we all know uh, this. This figure, uh, the figure in the left-hand side, has a big problem about the selection bias. Therefore, we uh, adjust the selection bias, and uh, we, we got about, uh, we got a 10 percent mortality reduction. But please keep in mind that the 10 percent here uh, is a figure for uh, coronal cancer between 2004 and 2009, which cover about 21 percent of the subject. Uh, if we extend our uh, our our screening program and uh, screening more people and uh, to uh, to ensure uh, sorry to screen more people then uh, we 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 uh, we can expect uh, about 30, 36% mortality reduction given 60% screening rate for breast cancer uh, since 2004, we have a biannual mammography screening, but uh, this program has been involved, evolved from uh, 1999. Uh, between 1999 and 2001, we screened one million people. From the beginning, we want to do a, a we want to the surgeon uh, suggested to do a, a ultrasound screening, but we found the clinical capacity is difficult. So uh, the majority of uh, in this in this period, uh, almost uh, one million women has uh, undertaken the clinical breast examination. And only 30,000 uh, 30, subjects, about 3% received the ultrasound screening. And uh, uh, after 2001, uh, with, uh, the government started to think uh, to think to do the mammography screening. But at that time, the, uh, the manpower is still insufficient. Therefore, we use a, a risk-based uh, approach. Uh, we want to uh, distinguish our uh, our women by high risk and low risk. And the government want to screen for half, uh, half, half women. So uh, we developed uh, the uh, risk score based on uh, information we collected in the first period. And uh, uh, we, we use our risk score to uh, refer uh, those in the top 50% risk women uh, for mammography screening. And uh, then comes to our third, uh, third, third period of mammography screening. And here is the uh, uh, results for the uh, for the screening finding. Uh, you can find you can you can find the uh, with the clinical breast examination, the PPV is the lowest, about 1.5 percent. Risk space brings it up to 3 percent, and uh, uh, the mammography screening uh, uh, increase increase the uh, uh, PPV to. Uh, almost 5%. Uh, the same is for the detection rates. Uh, the CBE got the lowest uh, detection rate, about 1%. Uh, with the risk-based uh, mammography, we have about 3%. Now, uh, with the biannual mammography, we, ha we have about 5% uh, breast cancer detected for every uh, uh, for, for women. And uh, uh, also, uh, when, 
we look at the stage difference by different, uh, by different periods, uh, the stage two, sta the proportion of stage two plus has been increased from 50 Eight percent to uh, sorry decrease from fifty eight percent in the CBE to uh, 40, 48 percent uh, in the biennial mammography screening, and uh, uh, we we just mentioned we have a rollout uh, rollout approach after two thousand ten. So we compare these two periods. We found uh, the the volume of course the volume has been increased, but unlike the colorectal cancer, our positive rate does not change a lot. This is majorly due, due to the, um, the unchanged the screening setting. Also, we recruit women from the community in the first period. They still take the mammography in the hospital. So uh, this won't uh, change quite a lot for the positive rates and uh, the detection rate, as we have seen in uh, colorectal cancer. And uh, uh, when also, when we, uh, when we evaluate this program, we want to compare our uh, biannual screening to the, uh, to the, to the uh, CBE. But uh, uh, this has some difficulty because uh, some women will experience uh, maybe two programs or three programs. So uh, we use the propensity score adjustment. Uh, we try to uh, balance uh, women's characteristics between the three groups. And, uh, 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 here is our results. We found that our uh, biannual mammography screening has a 40% mortality reduction and a 30% advanced cancer uh, reduction. For the oral cancer, uh, in, in Keelong, in 2001, we have uh, conducted a, a randomized control trial, and the lead trial has uh, suggested that uh, dental visual inspection is not, uh, is not different from that uh, supplement with the toilet in blue. So uh, we said, uh, this trial, the result of this trial suggests government use only dental visual inspection. Uh, nowadays, in our oral cancer screening, we don't use uh, toilet in blue. Between 2000, uh, 2004 and 2009, we, uh, we screened for more than 2 million people, and the positive rate is about uh, almost 1%. Referral rate is high. Um, when, when we look at the, um, the detection rate uh, and the positive predictive value, uh, you, can, uh, you can see uh, for the those with the beta quiz chewing, it's always um, the, the PPV is, uh, is not, uh, it's not different, quite different from those only smoking. But the detection rate is, uh, has been, uh, is, is higher than those only uh, smoke. And, uh, um, among all the cancers, uh, we found that the proportion of uh, advanced cancer between attendance and non-attendance is not different. Uh, it's n it's, there's no, uh, no, no uh, significant difference. Uh, from the beginning, uh, people were shocked and, and think that oral cancer screening is useless. But uh, we have to be very uh, careful because only oral cancer screening not only detects early oral cancer, but also detects uh, uh, oral pre-malignancy, which uh, might have the effect to, to reduce the uh, oral cancer instance. So we have to look at the instance rates. Uh, if, we, if you look, look into the instance rates, uh, you, you, you will find the attendance uh, has a lower instance rate of oral cancer compared with, uh, compared with those not attend. And uh, here is the uh, result on, on cumulative mortality. Compared with uh, um, those uh, not attend, the relative risk is about half. But again, here is the uh, selection bias problem. So uh, after, adjusted, uh, after adjustment for the selection bias, we got uh, almost 30% mortality reduction from oral cancer. And uh, uh, for our uh, screening program, also it ha uh, nowadays already covers uh, 60, uh, already uh, cover uh, sixty percent subject, but we still encounter some uh, like a low screen rate. We want to uh, enhance our coverage rate higher, and uh, we have uh, still have a uh, cushion. Uh, sorry, change uh, challenge for the interval cancer and the insufficient clinical manpower for referral. So uh, we have to uh, we have to. In 
enhance the uh, public awareness uh, via health education to the, uh, to the residents, and we have to uh, improve the quality, and we have to uh, uh, increase the manpower. So in conclusion, our uh, coronal cancer reduced 10% mortality reduction given 21% coverage rate, and we expect for 40, uh, 40 mortality reduction uh, with a 60% screening rate. And uh, uh, our mammography screening increased, uh, sorry, decreased 40% mortality and 30% stage two breast cancer. Our oral cancer has uh, decreased uh, almost 30% mortality from oral cancer. So here is my presentation, thank you. Okay, so we may only have time for the one question, if we have, is there any? Okay, if there's not, thank you for your presentation. Oh, you have one? Oh, you have one, okay. Uh, Hello. Hello, thank you. Thank you for your presentation, very interesting. You said that in several cases, you made groups of people, but they were very wide, so you had to develop a, um, risk assessment in order to make groups of people and send them to screening. As far as I understood, you spoke about uh, breast cancer. So what criteria you used uh, to assess risk groups? What factors uh, do you use uh, to assess risk of uh, breast cancer and colorectal cancer? As far as I understand, uh, everything looks uh, quite well in terms of uh, informatization. Are you planning further personalization of screening? Are you going to personalize screening to make it more efficient? So two questions. Uh, thank you very much. OK, uh, make, a brief, a make a brief answer. Okay. Uh, for the first question, uh, we, only, uh, we only stratify uh, people for the breast cancer between 2001 and 2003. And uh, uh, how to do that? We use the uh, uh, information from the previous period between uh, 1999 and 2000, 2001 and to develop the risk score and then use our Taiwanese uh, score to apply to Taiwanese women. So, uh, and uh, for the second question, uh, uh, for colorectal cancer, we screen all, all population. Uh, for the uh, for the personalized uh, screening, uh, yes, we uh, we we are thinking about the uh, personalized screening, and uh, there have been some ideas. Uh, but uh, in practical, how to do that? We uh, we are still uh, planning with the government. Yeah, thank you. 